Oh, hello. As planned, this is part two of the um, series I'm doing on the indigenous um, Siberian peoples that I um, I share a genetic heritage with. And this is part two of the Oregon people who number less than 9,000 uh, in, uh, people in the whole world. They live mostly in northeast China, a place that used to be called Manchuria, in Mongolia, which is in China, in the People's Republic of China, and there are about 49, it's probably more than that now, hopefully, in Mongolia, which is not a communist country and is not part of China. Okay. The first part was more like an introduction, um, but I covered quite a few topics. I thought I'd start off by talking about their religious beliefs. Sorry, my voice a bit quiet tonight. Alright, the Oregon people believe in shamanism with nature and animism. This kind of religion, well, it's not really a religion, is it? Is closely, it was a spiritual belief, is closely combined with the unique primitive ideas of the nation. Their rel religious forms include nature worship, totem worship, and ancestor worship. Shaman is the messenger between God and man can be male or female and is usually hereditary, passed down from father to daughter or son or mother to daughter and son. But it's usually kept in the family, yeah. Shamanism believes in quite a lot of gods. The natural gods worshipped by the Oregon people are the sun god, moon god, Big Dipper Star God, Fire God, Heaven God, Earth God, Wind God, Rain God, Thunder God, Water God, quite a lot of gods, Grass God, Mountain God, and so on. So virtually everything in nature has its own God. In addition to the worship of nature, the ancestors of or, of the Oricon also worship the totems of Nayanayuku. Probably pronounced it wrong. That's bear and Laomas tiger. So the totems are like animals, aren't they? Yeah. The Oricon people taboo. The names of bear and tiger. Oh, I wonder why that is. Are they taboo? The names? I just said them. Mm hmm. So, I hope, hope nothing bad happens to me. But called them Baorican God. So, they don't call them by their real names, they call them the bear, they call the Beorican, which means God, and the tiger, Nayuyan, which means official, and Wute, master. The Oregon people's worship of their ancestors, ancestors is very popular, and it is the same now. A lot of, um, Countries do like ancestor worship, don't they? A lot of peoples, I mean, different parts of the world, like places in Africa. Um, Koreans, sort of. Even it's even though <clears throat> a lot of Koreans are Catholic or Protestant, they still worship their ancestors, show respect. I think we should show respect to our ancestors. And I like it. I like it because what we're doing at the moment, well, mainly my sister, she's finding out all 
about our ancestors and relatives and I want to keep their spirits and their names if possible alive and thank them because if they hadn't struggled I know a lot of them were probably horrible people but the majority were pr people living ordinary lives getting on with life and having children and if they hadn't done any of that I, I wouldn't be here so I've got every single one of them to thank so in a way I do worship my ancestors I think we all should do really okay festivals oh there are not many traditional festi festivals of the Oregon people such as the spring fest this is badly translated by the way all right they don't have a, a lot of traditional festivals but what they do have is the spring festival and they have something called the Mokon M Mokan meeting of the clan the religious activity which I can't pronounce it's not worth me saying it anyway it's a religious activity I don't know how often they do it once a year maybe and I don't know what it involves it doesn't tell me and the bonfire festival well I think every country has its own bonfire festival we do don't we Guy Fawkes night I'm not sure I agree with that though as I'm a Catholic well lapsed anyway the main festival is the Lunar New Year and that is um that's celebrated by many people doesn't it the Chinese especially mm. in modern times the social organization structure of the Oregon people has undergone fundamental changes and their religious beliefs have faded out of the Oregon people's thinking unfortunately Mokan Congress and the religious activity which I don't know about have been replaced by just the bonfire festival influenced by other ethnic groups the Oregon people also celebrate Mid-Autumn Festival Dragon Boat Festival that's obviously Chinese isn't it New Year and other festivals the Spring Festival it's like May Day isn't it the Spring Festival is a happy day for Oregon people to celebrate hunting hunting harvest and welcome welcoming in the new year therefore Oregon people also uh, Oregon people attach great importance to the spring festival it's a sign of life isn't it spring you know the birth of animals lambs Easter May Day every year on June the 18th is the traditional festival of the Oregon people the bonfire festival oh I kept thinking that would probably be in winter but it's not it's in summer on this day the Oregon people will light bonfires sing and dance and celebrate their own national festivals Mm, I bet that's quite exciting I wonder if they drink a lot of um, mare's milk or something like that or well, they might not drink mare's milk alright hunting hunting is the survival needs of the Oregon people but I don't think many are hunters now they hunt in the vast forest all year round Horse hunting and dog hunting are indis indispensable helpers for Oregon hunters known as hunters, the hunters partners, yeah, dog and the horse. For this special reason the Oregon people gen generally do not kill horses and dogs nor do they eat 
the dog meat or horse meat like some cultures which is good to know okay I've got two pages stuck together. The diet. It's probably changed radically now. Probably live on McDonald's and Chinese food and Mongolian food. Alright. In the past, the diet of the Oregon people was mainly animal meat. Supplement, supplemented by fish and wild vegetables mm. I like wild vegetables Not that I've ever eaten any Oh I have There were some radishes on here They were called devil's claw or rat's claw They were green, pointed, really tasty But I'm all, all for eating wild vegetables And I'd like to learn how to identify um, wild plants and herbs Mm. Edible ones, obviously. Yeah, edible. But did I say edible? <laughs> not obviously not poisonous. <laughs> All right. Later, rice rice noodles were introduced. Oregon people also like to eat roe deer, deer cudgel, whatever cudgel is, wild boar, bear meat. Mm. I wouldn't like to eat um, something like a bear I'll Stick to a herbivore animal Well, pigs are omnivores, aren't they? Mm. You want to be a vegan one day Still thinking about it Right But also eat small animals And flying birds uh, We used to eat um, This country, we used to eat little tiny Blackbirds and things like that Mm. Well, they didn't have Sainsbury's and Waitrose and Tesco's in those days. Alright. The main methods include cooking handlebar meat. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Maybe this was written by an American and they might know what handlebar meat is, but I haven't got a clue. Barbecue, everyone loves a barbecue Roast meat, stew, soup Well, stew S Stew and soup is the same thing really, isn't it? Stew is just a thick soup And soup is just a runny stew <laughs> True Drying dried meat Yeah, cauliflower Oh, cauliflower Perfusing serum. Mm. Sorry. I haven't got a clue what perfusing serum means. I don't like the sound of it. Do you? No, I'm not laughing at their diet. I'm just wondering what what is it? I'll have to Google it tomorrow. Right. Bone marrow oil. Well, bone marrow adds flavour, doesn't it, to dishes, to stews, etc. I've eaten it. Raw roe deer liver. Mm. I don't like the idea of eating raw liver and kidney, etc. I used to like kidneys, but cooked. You, you can't really find them very often in the supermarkets now. I'd, I'm not really mad on them anymore. Rice noodles, mainly noodles. Oh, wait, rice noodles mainly include noodles. That doesn't make sense, does it, that sentence? It's bad, isn't it? Alright. I suppose I mean the noodles they usually have are made from noodles. Yeah, and um, rice. Oil noodles. Hmm. I don't like anything with oil written in it, so oil noodles sounds horrible. What type of oil? You can't just make noodles out of oil, it's impossible, isn't it? You can try if you want. <laughs> Alright. 
pancakes, I love pancakes, fried noodles, love fried noodles, noodle soap, love fried noodle soap, fried noodles with oil, uh, yeah, just a bit of oil, porridge, don't like, um, thick plum porridge, plum porridge, mm, sounds alright, sticky rice, yeah, I like sticky rice and so on, quite a varied diet actually, in the Oregon language, the oil noodle is called tubules. This is a translation, obviously, because it's not an Oregon word. It's an English word. The oil no noodle translated is called tubules. So I suppose they're like thickish noodles with a hole running right through the middle, like a very long macaroni. I could be wrong there. I could be wrong. Pull the rolled noodles into the rolling white water. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Pull the rolled noodles into the rolling white water one by one. Remove them and mix them with seasonings such as cooked meat slices, salt, salt, wild leek flowers. Then pour in the heated boar oil. Boar, yeah, pig. Pour in the heated boar oil, oh god, or boar, or bear oil, oh, and mix them well before eating. No, I don't think, I would try, I think I would try a tiny amount. Yeah, out of respect. If I was there, I said, would you like to try this? This is one of our national dishes, I said, yes, I'll just try a little bit to start with, and you know, don't know, I might even enjoy it. Okay, leek flowers, that sounds interesting, I'd like to try those. Thick plum porridge is a kind of special eating method of Oregon people. Put thick plum into porridge, and boil it. It can be eaten when it it is burst a pink colour. It is colourful and delicious. Yeah, it probably is. Wonder what type of plums they are. The Oregon people like to drink will raise soap and birch juice. Will raise soap. I don't know what that is. Birch juice. I've had birch water, but not actual birch juice. Birch water is birch syrup or juice that's been diluted with water. So you just get a tiny flavour of the birch syrup. It tastes a bit like paper, to be honest. If you have a drink on paper, it tastes a bit like that. But I'm different, and I like to be different. So when I see it, I buy it. And I drink it. Every spring in May and June, cut a small hole in the birch root. Birch juice will gush out. Well, I'm not sure if it gushes out. I think it's more of a sap. But I didn't write this. Someone else did. who probably got more knowledge. Alright, clear, sweet and delicious. The Oregon people also drink a birch pulp. Called disease. Why are they giving that name? Can you imagine me? And I'm trying to sell my brand, and I don't know. You go to if you want to. If you thought of this thing, you want to make. You know, selling the shops eventually. Where you go? Um, I don't know. Advertising agency or something. To say, I've thought of this terrific drink. It's made of birch bark. Yeah, no, don't worry. It's really good for you. It's really healthy. And I've thought of giving it the name disease. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to work. I don't know why they called it disease. The Oregon people also drink a birch pulp called disease. Peel off the birch bark and gently scrape off the milky, viscous sap. Yeah, I thought so. It's sap. It, it doesn't gush out as water. Sorry. 
on the trunk with a hunting knife. It tastes sweet and refreshing. Well, you could have called it refreshing instead of disease, couldn't you? I think this is badly translated. I don't even know what language it's translated from. I think it might be Russian or Chinese. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know more about this Woo Wazy soap. But I've got a, I've got an idea. It's made from birch juice or birch bark or something. You know. No, you can't eat birch bark, can you? No, you don't. But no, enough, enough. Clothes and accessories. The costumes of the Oricon people also fully show the characteristics of the hunting people. The roe deer skin processed by women in Oricon is strong, soft and light. To adapt to the cold climate and hunting life, the roe deer fur clothes and caps created by the women are unique and, and unique. Yeah, see what I mean. Roe deer leather garment, which is called Su N in Oregon dialect, mostly keeps the true colour of roe, roe, of the roe deer skin and is sewn with roe deer tendons into fine threads. It is mostly a right side skirt robe, right-sided skirt robe and decorated with bows and scissors. Mm, no, I don't think so. And, cl and cloud roll patterns, which is both beautiful and strong. I'm not sure what they would mean by scissors. It's a, I think it's badly uh, translated there. The roe deer head cap of the Oregon nationality Looks like a roe deer head. It's vivid, lifelike, warm and exquisite. Pity I haven't got a picture to show you. I'm sure you can find it on, um, if you go on Wikipedia and type in Oregon people clothes, you might see it. It's worth a look. Obviously most people only wear those sort of clothes for, um, you know, festivities, etc. Um, maybe some out in the country, out in the sticks, might still wear wear these sort of clothes, but not the younger generation. I very much doubt it. Just wearing what everyone else in China's wearing it, wearing. Well, I think that's about it now. Yeah, because it mainly goes on a little bit about the history and um, oh, this is quite interesting, so I'll, I'll tell you about this. Wind burials. I don't know if it's still practiced today or if it was something they did in the past. It says they're practiced by, wind burials are practiced by the Oregons when a person dies his corpse is put into a hollowed out tree trunk and placed with head pointing south on a two meter high on two meter high supports in the forest. Sometimes the horse of the deceased is killed to accompany the departing soul to the netherworld. Only the bodies of young people who die of contagious diseases are cremated. So really these people are they're put into a hollowed out tree trunk. Um whether it's completely covering them or not, or it's just like a bath, if you know what I mean, then that wouldn't be a very nice sight for certain sensitive people this would be decomposition that can take weeks as well depending on the location and the weather so i imagine that they would be in put into a whole tree trunk 
that's been hollowed out. Yeah. And only young people that die of contagious diseases are cremated. Whether that's still practiced today, can't be sure. There's not a lot of info on the internet about these people, unfortunately. Let's see if there's any other things that are interesting. Yeah, monogamy is practiced by the Oricons, who are only permitted to marry people outside their own clans. Yeah, I mentioned that before, it's very sensible. Um, proposals for marriage as a rule are made by go-betweeners, sent to girls' families by boys' families. It's a bit about music as well, but I'm not really into music, unfortunately. So you won't be able to hear me talking about it. Yeah, most of them have been settled to, in the Soviet times. They were made to settle down on farms, or community farms. Um, but later, a lot of them, it says, fled back to hunt in the forests. Uh, well, the building of permanent housing for the Oricons got started in 1952 with government allocations. A dozen villages were built in the in an area, I can't pronounce the name, for 300 families that used to lead a wandering life. Another three villages were built for 150 families in 1958. In 1956, the Americans began to grow crops. They were taught by the Han, Chinese and Dawa, D-A-U-R, farmers. I'm not sure about that, people. I know I mentioned them last in the last Oregon video. Yeah, they became self-supporting for food grain for the first time in Oregon history. And in the autonomous region, in their autonomous region, they have now, or oh, this is in the past, established thirty-seven factories and workshops, turning out farm machinery, electric appliances. Flour, powdered milk, furniture, leather, leather, fur and candles. The area has also built schools, department stores, hospitals, banks and cinemas. So they've become modernised since the 1950s really. And they're more or less, yeah, modernised. One last thing, it said diseases took a heavy toll in the old days. I don't know when we're talking about, 1950s, 40s or before that. And 80% of the women suffered from gynecological troubles due to the lack of doctors and medicine and ignorance. Yeah, this must have been like in um, before, 19, before the 1950s. They have been put under control with the help of mobile medical teams sent by the government, the launching of disease prevention cam campaigns and the popular popularisation of the knowledge of hygiene. As a result, the Oricon population increased to 4,100 in 1982. So it must have been less than that. And this article is Chinese, actually. And it was written in June 
21st, 2005, so that's a long time ago. The Oregon population has doubled, more than doubled in size since 2005. I'm pleased to tell you it's now probably just under 9,000 as of this year. So hopefully it will keep on growing. And that's why I'm making these videos to tell people about these people that are on the verge of not total extinction, but by leaving their, you know, their, oh, what was I saying? Their, not their fat, yeah, their families, their traditions, their way of life, being an, you know, being identified as an Oricum, but no, deciding to marry out, marry a Chinese woman, marry a Mongolian lady, etc., etc., until. There's no Oregon language left, and no one can remember what an Oregon person was or looked like. So that's why I'm making these videos. I hope you liked it. I will be doing a couple more about the indigenous people that I'm related to. Um, uh, but I'm going to take my time. I think I'll probably do the Inuit next who uh, were indigenous to Siberia, but I think the majority of them moved to Alaska and Canada. So I'll be reading about them soon and uh, giving you another video about my distant relatives. All right then, I'll say good night, or a good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. Hope you like this video got anything to say put it in the comments i don't get enough comments so i don't know what i'm doing right and i don't know what i'm doing wrong all right then bye